Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News and actually welcome back to the first day after all the jokes, all the trolls out there. We're going to try and clarify what was true, what was not, and of course, what a better way to start off than tell you guys the best trolls we did see. So leave a comment down below what trolls you guys fell for. There were definitely quite a few out there that I fell for myself, I'm not going to admit to. The first of which we did see guys, apparently Cloud9's newest coach was going to be MoTV, replacing Valens. That of course was a troll guys. These next two tweets I do want to show you as well. I'm showing you the day after, so you're going to see who they actually were, but these players actually are these people actually did change their profile pictures like the Don Hossie does to try and trick you. The next of which, guys, we did see apparently Shroud we're actually going to be returning to Cloud9 starting roster and quitting full-time streaming. That was actually Zeus himself. A lot of people fell for that one for a short amount of time. And it's always impressive to see those comments, the first replies to these and saying, wow, I didn't believe that was actually going to happen. And all the people who don't realize the date was actually April 1st. Next up, though, brought to us by Stun Empire, a very good one I fell for right away, was the one we were all hoping for, guys. Apparently, Valve reverted their seven-day trade ban. That was a troll as well. On top of that, we also had Config apparently possibly leaving Optic Gaming. That was, again, I feel like I need to clarify again, these are all trolls, by the way, guys. The best trolls we saw on April Fool's Day. And then very lastly for all of you, we did see of course Olaf Meister leaving FaZe Clan for part time and being replaced by Exist from NIP as their newest apparently it could be working into their IGL. We're not really sure the clarification of the roles as of right now. But yeah, oh wait, that wasn't a joke. Yes, all day yesterday, I think we saw a lot of people actually falling for this. We were going back and forth, of course. Uh, again, it, they felt the need to clarify this on several sources, guys. We had CSS, we had HLTV. We had several of the players had to clarify this move for everyone to believe it. And apparently, due to some re uh, regulation reasons, their actual uh, their transfer date actually occurred on April 1st. So it actually goes to show you guys this was not a troll. And again, it's one of the ones I fell for throughout the day. I was going back and forth. No, it can't be true. Yes, it, maybe it is true. Who, who knows? But apparently, due to personal reasons guys Olaf Meister has stepped down from that phase clan lineup and they've actually been practicing with exist to try and replace him for now so again it's not a set amount of time out there whenever Olaf Meister does want to come back as announced by phase clan themselves he's welcome back but we have had a new phase clan roster change and it's in big news and again unfortunately enough it did fall on April Fools uh, or April 1st so kind of a kind of a weird transition of news there guys that was the one troll out there that was actually not a troll all the other other jokes out there some great April Fools jokes as well if you guys did see McSkillet's video he just decided not to post it. He actually put it in a private video. I'll link his video down below if he still has it up for all of you guys. He decided this year, as you guys can see by the tweet on screens, to not show it. He didn't want to actually have people falling for that and manipulating the market like he did in the past two videos. And I do want to say, you know, despite, you know, the past with me and McSkillet, I know you guys might think I don't like the guy. He does still make really good content and especially around April Fool's Day, the last two years his videos have been absolutely amazing. So I wish that was still a thing and I wish he would have publicly, publicly actually publicized that video. But unfortunately enough, I'll link it down below for all of you guys. It's still a great one, but unfortunately enough, uh, McSkillet this year, no official April Fool's video. And another very real thing out there, definitely not a joke that I do want to talk about, and I can finally put in the, maybe the title as well. I didn't want to title it in yesterday's video because it just wasn't, it didn't feel right, right? There's been a lot of other sources out there covering this story, unfortunately enough, for Sadokist. If you guys are not aware of the story around him, well then, you, I don't know where you guys have been. He was also on Drama Alert, other people, other news sources talking about what he did live on stream. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, he dropped the N-word as well as told several people to kill themselves in some pretty vulgar ways. Obviously, uh, some actions that really cannot be forgiven, but really can be forgiven. Now, I know it's really weird to say that, and I've been a big hypocrite in the past, but I think the, the whole community right now is definitely, I, I guess you could say, responding in the way that you probably should be. There's definitely a leniency towards forgiving this guy, and I definitely do think the number one thing I do want to say, guys, is his his career should not be thrown away just because of this one incident. Now, I do I do really want to clarify what he said was incredibly terrible. If you guys have seen the clips, you guys look at I'm not going to link them down below. You guys can link them. Uh, you guys can look at them all, all your Yourselves, what he said was incredibly wrong. Now, don't get me wrong, guys, dropping the N-word here and there, that's been done a lot in the community, and I think that's definitely an action that should not be done by anybody, but I think even more importantly, what he said after that was, was, the, was the bad stuff. The way he told people to kill themselves was a step way, way too far. Now, I do want to say as well, I'll link his full apology down below. Sato Kiss has finally apologized to the community, and with great response so far, and I'm sure there'll be other videos out today, maybe by Richard Lewis, probably a, lo a lengthy video about this, guys. His apology was a good one. It was very, very long. I'll, I'll link it down below if you guys want to read through the entire thing. To pretty much sum it up, guys, he will be taking a week break from Pro League, and apparently he's been talking to all of his organizers so far. No one has decided to ban him yet due to these actions. They trust him. He's been a long-term employee for all these organizers out there, and of course, one of the better commentators in the CSGO community so far. I am grateful to see that the, the community is actually responding this way and forgiving the guy. Um, you know, give it some time. I, I Hopefully, you know, of course, his first event back on Twitch is going to be probably a riot. Of course, the things he said were on Twitch, and you guys can imagine the 
the Twitch chat is probably going to try and echo a lot of those things. I do forgive the guy. I really do. Um, and unfortunately enough, though, the community uh, is 50-50. There's, there's several people out there that are not going to take it very lightly and not going to be very forgiving. I forgive the guy. I hope he comes back stronger than ever. And again, it's going to take some time, but definitely it's not something that should be, if your career should be thrown away for and definitely one of the better commentators of all time. So anyway, moving on from that, guys, Sadokes has officially apologized. I'm sure he'll, he'll be facing repercussions for the next few months, but eventually will be forgiven by the community, and that's definitely how it should be. And next up in CSGO news, I do want to clarify the Gamers CSGO show, the rumors out there, the false accusations. If you guys follow the Gamers show, it's a very, very short season out there, but again, it's pretty much a Gamers. It's a CSGO reality show, uh, also based off a season show for CSGO teams out there. It's usually a red and a blue team. They compete for some kind of contract out there. Now, season one was met with a little bit of refute because of production quality on top of that. Apparently, season one, the winning team is still yet to actually, uh, you know, actually acquire some of their payments out there. I think that situation has been handled uh, off the off the cuff. On top of that, though, we had season two just finished up a couple weeks ago, and apparently other false accusations are out there where the team, uh, if you guys do not know, season two is all based around Fnatic Academy, where the winning team or players would actually given it or given a chance to trial for the new Fnatic Academy team. Now, the winning team was actually Team Red, and apparently, guys, they will be trialing for, for, the, for the short time being to become the new Fnatic Academy team. So as you can imagine, for any player out there, any EU, any player around the world who actually wins the show, it's a great opportunity to actually, you know, kind of exploit yourself as a professional CSGO semi-pro or professional player, and it was actually a great reward to have them be a part of Fnatic Academy. Now, all false accusations all across Reddit, guys, were saying these players were not getting their, their opportunity, were not getting paid. I can guarantee you guys that is not true. So clear up some false accusations. Thanks to my source who reached out to me. I'll link his post down below. He actually reached out to me via Twitter to try and clarify this, guys. The Gamer Season 2 team winners have been being paid, and they will be paid for the time being. Now, here's what's going to be broken down. Now, the show did promise the players, the winning team, the winning five players, a chance to actually trial as Fnatic Academy. As far as we know, guys, that's a one-month trial. Now, it does seem pretty short, but it's still a one-month paid trial. If it does go well as well, the Fnatic has actually promised these guys, if they do play well for the first month, they'll be guaranteed a six-month trial as that Fnatic Academy roster and still be being paid. So on top of that, I do want to clarify as well, uh, of course, despite those, it does sound really nice, right? They play well for a month, they get a six-month contract. Even though, though, if they do compare it to past results, Fnatic Academy, a couple months ago when they had their actual official academy roster, they were the single most, um, I guess you could say, single most surplusing, single most profiting Fnatic Academy team ever. They were making more than any other academy team across Europe. They had several really big tournaments out there and several lucky tournaments where they were invited to some very, very high prize pools. So it would be tough to compare them to past Fnatic Academy rosters or any academy roster out there. I hope they're not held to those standards because if they are, this team will only get a one-month trial. I hope they're signed for six months, though. I do want to clarify for all of you guys the false accusations out there. These guys are being paid by gamers, and it's been it's been clarified and actually confirmed by both sides, Fnatic and as well as Gamers Show. They are being paid. And I do want to apologize very quick, guys. This last story for today's episode of CSK News is going to be all about the Face It Major, the open and closed qualifier information. It gets very confusing. I'm going to link the post down below for all of you guys to read through. If you want to try and listen to my voice, I can try and explain it to you guys. It might take a few tries, though. So I'm going to try and clarify as best as possible the open and closed qualifier information out there, which is the most important information for all you all you players out there who want to try and qualify, at least for the minor system for our next major. And again, of course, beyond the minor, of course, we have the major qualifier. A lot of hard steps to get to the major, and a lot of big teams out there have failed to do so. Here's the information regarding our first three, our top regions out there, North American, EU, and of course, CIS. Those are your top three regions. The other nine regions, though, or the other six regions, I can't really give you details about for now, guys. For North America, CIS, and EU, they're going to have open qualifiers open to 1,024 teams. They're going to have four separate qualifiers, though, for each and every region. So to give you guys some background, background about this. We had Mike Lilly and Exist and their Swedish team try and qualify last year. I think they actually tried two or three times. So for each team in every region out there, it's actually open to 1,024 teams and you can get up to four chances to try and qualify. And why this is because it's a single elimination bracket of up to tw of up to over 1,000 teams. So as you can imagine, Mike Lilly and company really struggled because once you lose one, you're done, you're reset, you have to go to the next qualifier or try for the next one and you have to win several, several games back to back to actually try and uh, get that one of those closed qualifier spots. So for for those top four, those top three regions, guys, North American, CIS, and EU, they're going to take those those top eight teams. So they're going to be the top two winners of each and every qualifier. So each region has four qualifiers. The two winners from each and every qualifier will then be invited to the closed qualifier after on. Now on top of that, though, kind of a different move out there for South America, the Brazilian teams, they will have two qualifiers. So if you're a team in the Brazilian region, you will have two chances to try and qualify. The winners of each of those qualifiers will not go to a closed qualifier. They will go directly to the minor. And why that is, I'll explain very shortly here. So now that we have our eight qualified teams from the open qualifier from both NA, EU, and CIS. They're actually going to be joined by eight invited teams at the closed qualifier. Now, on top of that, though, 
for their closed qualifier. North America is a bit different. Uh, for all the other regions out there, it will be those top eight teams from the closed qualifier to go through to the minor. But for America, it's only going to be six North American teams going through to the minor. But they'll, they'll be joined, though, by those two Brazilian teams who actually qualify in the open qualifier. Now, again, if you guys are not really, really into the whole uh, the whole qualifier scene, that might have sounded very confusing. Again, I'll link their post down below for better explanation, guys. Just one kind of one minor change out there is North America is only going to send six teams, and they'll be joined automatically by two Brazilian teams at the minor, which makes a lot of sense, of course, especially over the past two years, we've seen Brazilian teams be really very good, very, very powerful teams out there. It makes sense to give them additional spots and maybe take away from North American teams who have not done too well in the past. Now, also on top of that, guys, one last big change at the minor this year, or actually at the closed qualifier, pardon my mistake there, at the closed qualifier, we will no longer see best of ones. It's going to be best of threes Swiss format. So that's going to be crazy to see, guys. The best teams will go through the minor. It's almost guaranteed. Last year, we saw best of ones. A lot of upset teams go through. This year, at the, at the closed qualifier, the teams who win there are going to go to the minor. We're going to see best of three Swiss format. That means pretty much guaranteed the best teams, the most qualified teams at the time, will go through. No flukes, no mistakes. It should be a great major qualifier system so far. And also, in very big news out there, this is not CSGO related at all, guys. I'm going to link his, his tweet down below. I was absolutely blown away yesterday. Um, if you guys don't follow the League of Legends scene, still a very good guy out there, and of course one of the better pro players in League of Legends history, currently plays for Team Liquid, his name is Double Lift. He posted a tweet yesterday which people thought was, some people, some very few people thought was a joke at first, but it became very apparent out of nowhere and, and very, very suddenly that it was not a joke. Um, it was posted on April Fool's Day, just unfortunately enough. Um, I'll link his tweet down below and show it to you guys maybe on screen, a little, little clip of it. But yes, Double Lift's apparently well, um, his brother actually attacked both of his parents last night and his mother was killed and his dad was was injured as well he's in the hospital so i i just want to you know, show support if you guys i'll link his twitter down below if you guys want to show him some love that that really ruined my night last night i got shivers reading this and again i thought people thought it was a joke at first uh, it being posted on that day it was not a joke guys this this you could say kid he's a little older than me this guy's parents he lost his mother yesterday, and his dad is brutally injured by his by his own family member. So, um, if you guys want to show him some love, I'll link it down below for all of you. I'm gonna try and get Pet back, Pet back up, but that was in crazy news, guys. And of course, he's seen crazy responses so far. I have not seen news like this in a long time or ever. And I wish you, I wish him all the love in the world. I can't imagine what he's going through. Um, so, I, I'll link his Twitter down below, guys. Please show him some love or show him some support. Some support. Um, so yeah. Anyways, let's do the closing. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's episode of CSK News. If I did miss anything, I do apologize, guys. Please comment it down below. I'll Definitely cover it in tomorrow's episode. I hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, my name is Jake Morales. You also big announcements, guys. This Friday, I'm gonna do a special stream and also make a special video about that. I think on Friday's stream, I'm gonna open 500 sticker capsules, and then on my own time, I open another 500. And I'm, make, I'm gonna make a video. Leave a comment down below if you guys want to watch this video. It'll be a super short one though, not like other case opening videos out there where YouTubers open like 50 cases and they take 17 minutes of video time. It would all be compressed. A 1,000 sticker capsule opening. It would all be compressed probably to four to five minutes. I show you guys the results and of course what you can expect if you open a thousand yourselves if you guys like that video idea i'll probably be doing that friday for a stream as well as plus a video and uh yeah that's what i have planned so far hope you guys all enjoy my name is jake Murray, like you and i will see you all next time goodbye guys